Hi, it's Wendy. Today I want to teach you a little something about your brain because one of my readers actually sent in a question about kind of how the brain works and how you can make certain changes. So I thought that I would just go ahead and work on that with you today. Are you game? Yeah? This might involve a little bit of hypnotizing. I hope that's okay. Alright, so basically you got to realize that the brain is a lot like a computer. You learn something new and like a computer you put information all over your computer. Or worse than others, but you put it in places where you can never find it again and ah, can find those files. But your brain's kind of like that too. You study things and you learn things and perhaps you don't put them in any particular location. Well, the, the brain is very compartmentalized and basically what they found is when people have had strokes, sometimes it will, it will destroy just a specific part of their brain. So someone who, could, um, who cannot name vegetables, they can still name fruits. And this kind of research brain is very specific as to how it stores things. So if your computer has files that are all over the place and you have to search and search for them, there's another way to do it. Of course, you put the things into certain files or into folders where you know how to find them. You have put an icon, even a color or something that is a specific thing that allows you to find it very easily and click on it and get what you need, right? So your brain's kind of the same way. If you're studying something but you don't have a place that you put it or you want to learn a specific thing and, and you learn it, but you don't know how to access it quickly. You don't have anything that anchored it in, and you don't have a trigger to get it back. And you got to get it back. That's important. Here's what we do. Like if um, if you were looking through your attic and you found this box, and you open the box, and in the box you go, "Oh my diary! Oh my gosh!" And you reach in the box and you pull out your diary and go, oh "My God, what's in here?" Well, because of that diary. You have, because of the color and the texture and the feelings and even the smell, you have created a trigger that goes to a specific part of your brain that held all of the feelings and emotions that you had while you were writing in that diary. You might instantly remember what room you were sitting in, what you used to write with. It will bring back all of those feelings from when you were very young about what you were going through, even before you've opened it. Because what you did is that is you accessed a part of your brain that was triggered when you held that diary. So when we create changes, whether I'm working with an athlete to help him or her be better at their sport, a golfer to hit the ball farther or straighter, or a basketball player to make their free throws, the first thing I want to do is create something that is an anchor that anchors in the place that the brain is going to store the ability to jump higher, run faster, be smarter, more creative, whatever it is. Got it? Okay. So now, how do we want to do this? One of the first ways to do it is to create something that is a visual, sort of an icon in your brain. So let's say you're studying for a test, and this is something I did with a law student that was studying to pass the bar exam. I had her close her eyes and I had her imagine something that I call a mind machine, and this mind machine is going to be a specific color, it's going to have a shape, it's going to have a texture, perhaps it has buttons and levers and all kinds of things. And then you take this information that you're learning and you imagine it going into that mind machine. This mind machine creates a, a kind of a, a place in the brain, an area where you're going to store that information. As you're studying it and storing it, it all goes in there. Later, when you want to recall that specific type of information, then you imagine that mind machine. You have maybe a key or a button or something in your mind that you imagine using to open it up. This works great for people who are taking tests or exams or need to recall certain information. Now let's say um, you want to remember names and you're really bad at remembering names. So what happens for most people is you go and meet someone you go, Hi, I'm Wendy, nice to meet you. And they go, Hi, I'm George, great to meet you too. And you go, Oh, you're kind of hot. You say, Yeah, so are you. Want him? Yeah. And then you go like, Well, anyway, and then you go later, Crap, what was his name? I can't remember his name. Well, Okay, maybe it doesn't happen exactly like that. So you, you meet someone and you immediately think, ah, shoot, I can't remember her name. What was it? I'm so bad at names. Now, as you are trying to remember that person's name, you're telling your brain to go to the place where you don't remember names because you say, I'm so bad at names. Why can't I remember that name? I always forget names. So here you are. You're trying to get your brain to go, let's say, like here where you store names. But instead, you're actually making your brain go like here where you have the duh segment of your brain that says, I don't remember names. Simple? Yes, it's a path just like on your computer that goes to a that has that specific information. So if you wanted to remember names, and this is a really great example of how you might want to use this. 
You would simply close your eyes and you would create something that is like a machine, an object, or an icon. You would attach sound to it that says the person's name when you meet someone, when you shake their hand or you pat them on the back or whatever you do to them, and you hear their name, your brain is automatically going to go to that part that says, I remember names instantly and easily. You hear their name, you see their face, you attach that to the sound of their voice and lock it in. Now what I like to do as well is touch my earlobe and use that as an anchor that anchors in that name with that face with the sound of their voice. Got it? Okay, good. Now later on, like you run into them next month or, or 10 minutes later for, you know, some of you, you run into them and you go, oh, what was their name? Oh. Ah, George, George, great to see you. And uh, they say, wow, you're good with names. And you say, yes, I So how else might you use that? Would you use it? to create something that will help you have better sex, more sexual confidence, to be a better lover? Would you imagine closing your eyes and bringing in all of the experiences of being a great lover, feeling confident, connected, feeling close and loving, and having a great experience? Then anchor it in with something visual, kinesthetic, auditory, um, you know, taste and smell, throw those in there as well. Or would you use it to be more creative? Would you want to be able to be a better songwriter, a musician, or a better artist? Or would you want to overcome writer's block? Well, if you sit there in front of your computer and you go, Oh, God, I have to type this paper and I can't think of a thing to say. What am I going to do? That won't help. No. What you do is create a part of your brain that is responsible for unleashing creative genius. And you can do that with, first, a visual thing that's like a mind machine, that's what I like to call them, that has a specific task. It reaches out into all the areas of your mind to find the creative resources that you need to be like just brilliant. Good? Okay, I like that. So, that's about it. That's what I got for you today. I hope you have enjoyed yourself. Um, I have too. And uh, stick around because I will be bringing you many little lessons about how you can make your brain a better place to, to be. Okay, bye guys, I'm Wendy.